Hi, this is going to be the second video in our series on Phaser and JavaScript and learning JavaScript by, you know, making games with Phaser. Um, in the last video, we installed the starter project and we, we installed the dependencies and then we built the starter project by running npm start, right? And, you know, our, our, our project currently looks like this, right? So this is just kind of the default code that just makes an image kind of animate on the screen. And the project looks like this, right? So here we can see our project, and there's a few files in here. So let's tour the project just for a little bit here and, um, and see what it looks like, right? I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, right? And what we can see in the folder here is we've got the, the, the Phaser 3 project template folder, and then we've got assets, build, and node modules. When we ran npm install, we added a bunch of files to this node modules folder. As a matter of fact, it created the node modules folder also, right? Um, the source directory contains the code that we're going to write. So the code you write will all go into the source directory, okay? When you ran npm install in the, uh, the terminal, right, we did, we did this, we went in here and we, we ran um, somewhere up here, uh, somewhere way up here, I can't find it now, um, yeah, where, oh, npm start, very top, there we go, right, so when we ran this, what happened is um, npm looked at, at package JSON here, and found the start script, okay? And it read the code here on this line, and it said, like, hey, I'm going to run build, and I'm going to run the, de the Webpack dev server on port 8000 and some other options, right? Okay? And so what happened when it did this is it, it actually called the build script, and that said Webpack mode is production, and it ran some, some code in the background that took a bunch of files out of our node modules and compiled them together into a single JavaScript file. And it put that code that it compiled the, the files into, it put it into this folder right here called uh, build. And you can see there's a, f a file in here called project.bundle.js. Okay? So this is how all modern um, web projects are built. Like you can create a simple web page by just making it an index.js and writing some JavaScript code in it. But as soon as your project gets to any, you know, even moderate size, all of a sudden you're using these build systems to include libraries. So if you want to leverage all of the, the, the massive amount of code that's available out in the world to use, right, that people are sharing, you know, and, and building projects with and, and improving every day, um, we're going to build a project this way. So all the code that we're sharing from the internet and, and that people are contributing to is going into this node modules folder, and then we're compiling it using Webpack into a single file here. This file is actually obfuscated and minified too. So minified means it removes all of the extra white space. It leaves these comments in here, but it also removes all the extraneous comments, right? Um, these comments like credit the author, right? Like Richard Davey is the author of, of, of um, Phaser, right? And then all the variables and stuff are shrunk down to single letter names to make them a little bit smaller and kind of minify the code even further, right? But anyway, this all functions, right? Um, and essentially this code here is built from all of the the functions that, that are in node modules, or at least all the ones we're using, and the code that we wrote in source, okay? So it takes our code too, okay? And this is how all modern projects are built. This project, if we look at, you know, index HTML, you can see this is just like anybody's index HTML, and this one contains a script tag, and you can see the script tag points to um, build project.bundle.js, okay? So that's how the project is running. We're, we're actually viewing index HTML in the browser over here, and the JavaScript that's driving or, or running that project is in the build folder here, and we're, we're linking to it, right? We've created a link, okay, or an 
you know, pointed to it from, from the source attribute here, right? And we're building this every time we, um, the, the, the Webpack server, like once you've started it here, every time you save a file, it will re rebuild and start the project again and update it in the browser. So if we make a change over here, then um, it'll automatically show up. Or if we make a change in, in, in Atom, it'll automatically show up in the, uh, the browser. Okay, So that's kind of how the system works. Let's talk a little bit about this index.js. So this is the code that we're going to write to run the game. Okay. And this is using some modern JavaScript, and we're going to actually even update what's here. Okay, so looking at this, you can see that uh, it says import phaser from the top. So when we say import phaser, what's happening is we're importing the phaser library from node modules. And if I open up the node modules folder and scroll down a ways, um, let's see, N O P O. Oh, here we are in the P's process oh there's phaser so this is the thing that we're importing so when we say import phaser and we don't put anything else in here we just say the name we're talking about a package in the node modules folder okay this has also has a package json and the package json kind of tells the system like how to build this set of scripts into the the phaser library okay so um so that's how that works you don't have to actually ever edit anything in the node modules folder. As a matter of fact, you should avoid even looking at the node modules folder, right? Um, don't even look at it. If you've imported some package, then um, it should be in there. And if you know the name of it, you can import it up here with the name, okay? Um, let's actually change this import a little bit. So usually when you import, um, if you just say the name of a package, then you get that package and it actually creates a variable or like, like containing a function or some object of some kind. And you can use that here, but you have to know the name of the object. In our case, importing phaser like this imports phaser uppercase P like this, right? But um, sometimes it's nice to be able to see the name of the thing that you're importing. And so you can also import like this. You can say import some object from phaser or from some package, okay? And this works the same way. Let me hide this thing so I can see like this game is still running, right? It's refreshed and it still works, right? And you can import stuff from anywhere, right? So let's imagine that I wanted to um, get something from another file, right? So what I would do is I'd make a new file. And what I'd like to do here actually is I, I like this, um, this preload right here. And what they're doing is they're actually in config right here. They're making a new scene object right so they've got this object here and the scene must contain a preload and a create method but I kind of want to make my own scene right so what I'll do is um, is I'll make a new file and I'm gonna call this you know game scene.js and I'll save it to the source folder so now I've got source and game and index.js right here and game scene.js right let me go back to um, to index, and what I want to do is I want to create a new um, phaser scene. So a phaser scene is what we're seeing here. So there's the game, and the game can display scenes. So one scene could be one scene from your game, and a scene could be a level in the game. It could be the whole game itself. It could be a different you know, sub games within your game. It could just be the menu or the credit screen for the game. And a, a, a game can have multiple scenes. So you can have as many scenes as you like, okay? And you can change from one scene to another as the game plays, okay? So we're gonna make our own scene. So I'm gonna go to game scene here. And what I wanna do is I wanna import, and this time I'm gonna use the curly braces and I'm gonna choose scene from phaser okay and we'll talk about the difference like why this one's using the curly bracket versus why the other one didn't use the curly bracket let's go look over here so you can see this doesn't have the curly bracket around it right so if we imported something where we'd say like phaser dot the something then we wrap this something in the curly braces so here we could have said um, game oh, uppercase g right we could have said let's import game from phaser right like that okay 
and and that would be the same thing right but i didn't put phaser here and if i wanted to get phaser and game right we could do it this way and we would have both okay and we can see this still works over here okay um if i make the change like this then i don't really need phaser anymore right so i could take out phaser right um we want to get scene so besides game there's another property that we can get to so like if you say you know phaser dot uppercase scene right we can we can get a scene object like this right and so we would import that in this way right this file's not using the scene so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go over to game scene and i want to import scene like this and i want to create a new scene so a scene is a class and so what we're going to do is we're going to make a class that extends scene right so here i've got scene or game scene this is my custom version of scene and i want to inherit all of the properties and methods from the phaser scene so i'm going to extend scene that i got from phaser okay and the scene must have a preload method that you define and a create method so the preload method is where the scene can preload any assets it's using like and assets are things like sounds and pictures right so i can import all the sounds and the audio and the images that this scene is going to use and create is like the initialization for the scene so if i want to create the systems and create objects and you know put them on the screen they happen here in in create right so uh so what are we going to do next so we got our scene here game scene right and what i'd like to do is i actually i already already have this preload stuff here so i'm actually gonna copy this line right here out of out of preload and this says you know this dot load image logo and assets logo png so let's copy that and i'm going to move it in here into preload in my game scene and what does this do well this says this dot load so that's a method on scene so scene owns a load method and when we load an image we say this dot load image because we're loading an image right you could say load audio or load something else right and then we give that thing a name so anytime we want to talk about it we're going to we're going to call it logo and then we have to say what the file is so this is the name that we'll use to reference the new image that we've loaded and this is the path to the image so it says assets slash logo png and if i look in the assets folder you'll see there's logo png in here right and that's where the picture came from okay so here we are back in game scene we've 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 loaded up the image and what i want to do is i want to go in here and go to create and i'm going to copy all of the code here inside the curly braces right so i'll copy that and I'll paste it into the create method, okay? So what happens here? This is gonna make a new variable called logo, and we'll say this dot add image logo, right? And this 400 and 150 is the X is 400 and Y is 150. So this is the position of the on the screen where the logo will be displayed. And remember logo, this is like the name that we use to identify this image that we just uploaded okay so so phaser keeps all the things that you load into the scene it keeps them you know um, in a library in the background and it uses a name to keep track of those things so we can just use that name again okay so here's var logo we've just created a local variable inside create and we've called it logo and we've loaded up this name we've loaded up, or we've loaded up this image right and put it in logo and now this this dot tweens add creates a new tween so tween is an animation right and this says target is the logo that's this guy and this is the y this is where we want to animate to we want to get there in two seconds 2000 milliseconds right and this is like the easing function so this is like how it the motion looks and then yo-yo means like it repeats backwards and forwards like a yo-yo, right? And then loop means, negative one means like loop forever. We'll come back to this tween thing later, okay? Um, but anyway, if we've pasted all these things in here, essentially we've made the same kind of scene that they created here, but we just kind of did it in a more like, you know, 
kind of, uh, I don't know, codified way, right? We've kind of created it and kind of defined it as a, as a class that extends scene. And we can add other methods and other properties to this to the scene object and our scene object now is in its own file so we can work with it and edit it directly without the clutter of all the other code so how do we get the scene game scene out of this file and into index.js so what we're going to do is at the bottom of the file here I'm going to um, add add this line I'm going to say export default game scene okay don't leave the parentheses on the end okay so we're gonna take our our scene file right or our scene class here and we're gonna export it as the or we're gonna set it as the default export okay and if I want to get this out of here and into another file what we'll do is we'll go to the top of the other file and we'll say import name of our export from a file okay if the files are in node modules we just say the name of the package if it's a file that we've created we have to put dot slash and navigate to that file so if it's in the same folder it's just dot slash and then the name of the file so my file is called game scene so I'll just put in game scene here so that matches the name you don't have to put the dot JS on the end so really this is naming the file here right so I'm going to leave it as as game scene like that okay so now that I've got the scene let's see what can we do with it well instead of using this scene here what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace um, preload and create with uh, game scene right and then if I if I refresh this it all looks the same right actually I shouldn't even have to refresh it to just start on its own right so there we go right so now we've imported our scene from somewhere else and put it into this config file and then we created a new game and now we're not even using this stuff so we can delete this right and then we'll save it and there's our there's our project looks the same as before but now we've kind of organized it into separate files so I've got phaser at the top here and actually I'm not even using phaser right here so I'll delete that right I'm just using game which is this guy phaser game so we made a brand new game and then I'm using game scene here which I imported from my file and if I want to edit the game scene I just go to that file and I make my changes here okay um, and then you know this config object we pass it into game to configure our new game okay so anyway thanks for watching so that was a long video there and um, hopefully that explains kind of how to use import um, export and uh, you know kind of a explains a little bit about how to set up a phaser scene okay thanks for watching